Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back to part two of this 2007 Ford Escape. Uh, back in part one we did an inspection on it, uh, changed the rear brake cylinders because they were leaking brake fluid and uh, in this episode we're going to go ahead and pull out the steering gear and replace the, uh, the gear which is going to come with inner tie rods and outer tie rods. Uh, we are doing such things because there is excessive play in this inner the boot is torn and it's leaking a little bit of fluid. So uh, without any further ado and introduction, let's go ahead and get this thing raised up some. Moving on up, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start pulling this thing apart. Alrighty, we're over here at the left front. Let's go ahead and pull the cotter pins and uh, or split pins, whichever you prefer. And we'll go ahead and get these tie rods off and then we'll start, uh, we'll move inwards for more disassembly. All right, what do we got here, uh, 18 I think? Yes. Hammer time. Nice and easy. Okay, I've already gone ahead and pulled the uh, the right front outer tie rod off. Let's go ahead and raise this up all the way, and then we can get some access to the uh, subframe down below and uh, start on bolting the steering unit. Uh, I just got the new one delivered. Uh, wife unit went and picked it up. Oh, I'm hanging my light. Hang on a minute. There. Yeah, my, my light was getting stuck on the thing there. That was an unforeseen hazard. All right, down below, first thing we're going to do is uh, pull some of these subframe bolts out and let the subframe drop down a little bit. That'll give me space to reach the bolt at the steering shaft and uh, also remove the bolts that actually secure the steering gear to the subframe. So let's pull these down. Loud noises. You going to come? better. Am I out of battery already? Mm, oh, I switched it on too. Okay. Looks like we need some uh, manual unclicks. Now, let's see here. Come around to this side for some more leverage. Aha. There we go. Yeah, we're moving now. That one, good. All right, let's try this again with the electron clicks. Much better. Okay, so we've got that one loose, that one. Uh, there's one there I pulled loose and one on the other side. And then way up in there, we've got a, uh, there's a motor mount, a torque mount that uh, is hanging onto the subframe. So let's get up in there. I think that's a 15 mil. Let's pull that guy out. That was kind of loose. There we go. Okay, so the motor mount bolt's loose. So now I should have a, a lot of play going on here with this uh, subframe, I think. All right, it may be a little difficult to see, but there's one bolt here that uh, runs through the, uh, the steering gear to bolt it down, and then there's another on the right-hand side, and, and I can't reach that with this tool, so we need a smaller tool. All right, here's what we'll do. I'll go in, we'll break it loose manually, and then I'll go in there with the air ratchet, the electric ratchet, and uh, run the fastener out. Reverse clicks. Good. I believe that's a 15 mil. That's what I was using. And once it's free, I'll maneuver the, the unit over a little bit and that'll give me some uh, better access to uh, the lines, the fluid lines, the hydraulic fluid lines. There we go. Word. Okay, there's one and another one on the uh, passenger side over yonder. This one's a little harder to reach, so I'm gonna go in uh, through, the, through the wheel well. The uh, exhaust and whatnot's in the way on this side here. Couple reverse flicks. Oh, I can't fit my tool in, it's too big. No. All right, let's 
try it from the from the back side. It fits. And that's a negative. We're doing this one uh, with full manual action. The tool is just a little bit too big. There's a bracket there for that uh, power steering hose. Let's take that off. That might be in the way. Here, we'll go in with the, the 10 mil. Try to get that bracket off of there. Pretty tight. Close quarters combat. Ah, come on, get on there. Okay, got it. It's loose. Get that bracket out of the way and then I can try to get my tool back in. There's a little too much friction on those threads to, uh, to do it by hand, unfortunately. There we go. That was easy, right? There's our bolt. Got it. Okay, steering gear is loose with the exception of the uh, hydraulic lines and uh, the steering shaft. Okay, so we're looking back up from the bottom side now and that bolt right there is what secures the flange for the hydraulic lines. So uh, I need to get that thing broken loose next. Again, not much space to play with. I may need to just use a socket. Yeah, I don't see why that wouldn't work. I got space for that. Yeah. There we go. Come here. Don't want to lose this guy. There it is. Okay, drain pan. That's gonna be there to catch our power steering fluid that spills out. Let's go around the other side and pull the lines loose and then we'll work on that steering shaft. We're in the driver's side wheel well. Just gonna pop these lines out. If I can, just give them a bit of a wiggle and some tap and tap action. Yeah. All right, both lines are free. They are draining. Now I need to get in there. This is going to be a zero visibility operation. I've got to pull this dust boot up and uh, unbolt the steering shaft. Kind of easier said than done, I think. Yeah, that's up there too. All right. All right, we're back uh, below again. I couldn't really get a good angle from the side. So let's try it. Uh, on the back side one more time. We'll pry this boot up, taking care to not tear it. And I can see, I see the fastener. I believe that's a Torx. Uh, I grabbed a Torx 45. Let's see if that one fits. Uh, yeah, it looks like a Torx 45, okay. Let's go ahead and break this guy loose. I've got the, uh, got a ratchet on it with a long extension. And she's turning good. I'll just back this bolt out and then uh, we'll use a pry bar to separate the collar off of the steering shaft. Uh, again, we're doing this without tearing this little rubber boot. There we go. What? What is it, kiddo? The youngins are here again today. It's Saturday, there's no school. I know what you're saying, but Ray, you don't work on Saturday. Well, when you work for yourself, you work every day. That's just how it is. You do what you gotta do. Anyway, uh, the collar is becoming separated now, I think. Maybe. I'm off of there. We're, uh, we're not gonna fight like that. Oh, no. Okay, steering gear has a achieved freedom it's loose now i just gotta gotta wiggle it out 
Okay, back on the driver's side wheel well again. Let's uh, let's kind of wiggle this thing out. Hopefully we got a, I've generated enough space here. I think I did. Yeah, it's, it's coming out, it's moving. A little hung up on the other side, probably the tie rod. No worries. Give it a couple good yanks, she'll come out. There it is. Come on, steering gear. Yeah, there's our full view of our carnage. Come here, tie rod. Come here. Look up. All right, got it. Woohoo! Okie dopes. So we've got the uh, old unit and new unit lined up. Mounting points are the same. Looks like uh, length is the same. That's good. I had to disassemble the old ones just to get the jam nut. My new tie rods and the new rack did not come with jam nuts, so I had to take it apart anyway. It is what it is. And, uh, oh, I need my O-rings. And I got some new powder pins too. So this one's good to go. we we'll go ahead and finish prepping that and uh, we'll get it installed. All right, new unit traveling back around bright lights we're getting ready to go back in i've uh, i've already put the new o-rings on the lines inside just to save us all some valuable time so uh let's uh let's maneuver this thing into its home and uh, get her bolted back in and then we will be good to go and i can take this down and have a wheel alignment done and that will be that Yes, many of you were asking what I plan on doing about uh, wheel alignments since I don't have a, an alignment machine here. And the answer is simple. I'll get someone else to do it. That way I don't have to... Just shove that thing right on in there where she goes. That's what we need. You go in. Almost. We're almost in the brackets. Let's go down below and see if I can't get those uh, lines connected real quick like... Get these lines in easier said than done there's not much space to work with nor is there much leverage i can deliver there we go that one's in ah got them feed line and return line are in let's get that bolt in there i think it's this one little 10 mil right here yep get that guy started then the uh then we'll do the steering shaft then we'll bolt the unit to the rack or uh, to the, uh, uh, what you call it, words. Subframe, there we go, subframe. We'll bolt the unit to the subframe. Get the tie rods on, wheels on, etc. Click. Neutral drop click. There we go, it hooked up right there. Perfect. Okay, back around back again. Get this boot up here. Oh, good. The collar's in position. Let's just pry that back down and we'll toss the bolt into it. I call that the kill people bolt because if you forget it, then your uh, steering system comes apart and then you lose control of the vehicle. And that's how you kill people. And we don't want to do that. Oh, come on there, collar. Go down into your home. Well, I've been fiddling with this thing for about 20 minutes now. Just kind of wiggling it around and I got it. It's in position. I just need to uh, to get our bolt lined up and, and in there and I can tighten this down. For, uh, that actually hurt. My, my fingers are a little sore after that one because I had to reach inside of this uh, little dust boot right here and uh, manipulate that uh, universal joint that's in there all in an effort to, uh, to line up that little collar. Uh, it was not particularly easy or fun. It's my least favorite part about these kinds of jobs is this one critical fastener right here. And without it, someone might die. And that would be bad. Woohoo. Okay, hope you guys can see I'm going back in uh, through the wheel well again to uh, get a little bit of torque uh, on this fastener. I, I have it run down, but it's at a goofy angle and I can't get torque on it.
Yeah, I know you guys can't see. Maybe you can see through my voice. There we go. So anyway, I've got the uh, I've got the Torx bit on the bolt, and we're just gonna give it some, uh, some finalized flicks. Uh, again, without tearing that boot. Don't tear. Hang on here. All right, got it. Leakage. Torque achieved. Ooh. We'll slide that boot back down where it goes. It'll keep the seal clean. And then we can uh, get those bolts back in uh, that hold this unit to the subframe. We should do the, uh, I'll do the passenger side first. I can, I think I can manipulate that one a little bit better. Cause I can reach up and uh, get a hold of the gear at the same time and wiggle it around until this bolt fits, I think. Almost, yes, no. It's close. There it is, got it. There's one, that one's in, right over here. And let's go over to the driver's side and we'll get that one. Oh, it's not threaded, hang on, hang on. A little ahead of myself. There, now it's threaded. So we can go over to the driver's side next. Alrighty, driver's side bolt coming in. Giving it the uh, reach around treatment, Erico style. There we go, that one's on. Cool, so we got both bolts in. I need to secure the line with its bolts over there. We'll bolt these things down. And uh, oh, the little motor mount, can't forget that motor mount. You guys would never forgive me if I forgot that bolt. Oh no. Oh, uh, how did I do this the last time? Not like this. I think I went straight on. Sure. Licks. Ooh, Chick-fil-A is here. Not sponsored, that's just what's for lunch. Manual clicks. All right guys, I'm taking a break. I need chicken sandwiches in me. I'll be right back, you guys stay here. Enjoy this commercial. I'm back that was good my fillets of chicken were quite filling so uh, now we get back at it let's go ahead and put the tether bolt in Clicks. and I'll give it some manual torque to finish it off because that tool is not designed for delivery torque it's just designed to uh, move the fasteners around just the right wrench sure right wrench wrong side rut row Okay, and clickage, all right, that's in. All right, let's get out of here, because I've still got to put in the uh, bracket bolt for that line. Remember, I had to take that line loose to uh, get access to the big bolt. Squeeze you guys in here a little bit. Yeah, we're definitely running out of space now. Close quarters combat. There it is. All right. All right, we're going in again with the wrench. Let's finish this thing off. I hear kids screaming in the office. I think they're fine. Why aren't you uh, doing what you're supposed to do here? Not enough friction on my threads. There we go. Okay, that's tight. Okay, let's back up some. We'll, uh, we will run the bolts in, this one and that one for the subframe. You can't see, it's over there. That one, that one, there it is. And then we'll put the uh, outer tie rods on. Loud noises. There's a one. And the one down yonder. Cool. 
hard part's over. Let's go get the outer tie rods prepped and then uh, we will install those next. Okay, we've moved over to the toolbox bench. There's one of our outers. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. I've already got the jam nuts installed on the inner tie rods, which are on the rack already. Hmm, powder pin. That's good. What I meant by prepped is install the uh, grease fitting right here. It just kind of screws in. Like so. And I believe that's an 8 mil. That's what I got for grabbed, and I was mistaken. 7 mil. Let's try a 7. No. Now let's try standard. How about a 5 16 Let's see if that's it. Survey says yes. We don't want to overdo these because these guys will break off. And if they break off, then uh, then we're done. It's game over. We're going to do that times two. And then we can thread these new outers onto the inners and uh, bolt them to the steering knuckles. Get rid of that. Don't cut my fingies. Clicks. All right, back to the car we go. Okay, inner tie rod, outer tie rod. You two make your acquaintance. You're gonna be spending a lot of time together. Let's go ahead and spin this guy on. I, uh, I spaced these jam nuts uh, by counting threads and using my finger as a measuring tool. Uh, I hope to get them fairly accurate. And if not, uh, well, the alignment guys will deal with that later. Because I won't. And again, 19 millimeters. Let's see, the hole's not quite lined up. We'll go a little bit farther. No more. Mm, a little more. Got it. Fold our pin around, securing that castle nut for eternity. You're doing it wrong. I know, there's a hundred ways to do that. That's the way I'm doing it. Okay, let's do the uh, passenger side. Okay, moving over, all the way over here, back to the passenger side. And then repeat. Tie rod gets threaded on. That light's annoying, get that out of here. Come on. That's good right there. Come here. There it is. Castle nut goes on. Oh, right on, look at that. The hole lined up perfectly. That's cool, I couldn't do that again if I tried. Put that on there. We'll spin this one around and yeah, I know I'm doing it wrong. Do that kind of stuff on purpose. It's called comment generators. I stole that from Erico. Now these joints do have grease in them, but I'm gonna add some anyway. That way I know that they're good. And one more squeeze. There we go. And the other side as well. Oh, that's a mess. There. Shiny. Um, okay, I think that's it. What? I feel like I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? Um, oh, oh, the motor mount. You guys remember it. I didn't remember. That's right. Here's the bolt. Now I remember motor mount. Let's go back down below one more time and we'll get that mount set up. Then we can finish this off. Yeah, reaching again. 
Oh, nice. It's uh, it's aligned, just like it should be. Uh oh. My uh, my battery was crapping out on this one. It's got a poor connection. Nickage. Oh, uh, one more for good measure. There we go. All right. Mounts in, rack is in, lines are in, steering gear is in, tie rods are in, jam nuts are jammed. I'll put some torque on those in a moment. Uh, what else do we need to do? I need to change the oil and we need to fill, uh, need to fill up power steering. So let's let this down and we'll do, uh, we'll refill power steering first. Okie dokes, back under the hood. Time for some uh, pouring things. I do have a funnel. I'm not gonna use it. We're gonna do this the uh, manual method. I've got some, uh, some BG power steering fluid here. This is the good stuff. Let's see if my pouring things skills are uh, still up to par. Hey, hey. So far, so oh, I spilled some, I failed. We'll get it right, don't worry. So I, uh, I went ahead and skipped the oil draining procedure and uh, now we can just move on to the oil filling procedure. Uh, I got some 520 Mobile One, fully synthesized engine oil, because I don't use cheap stuff here. Quality doesn't cost, it pays, and I figure customers are here for quality, not, uh, not so much uh, perceived value. So we're only using premium level products. That's why I installed a Wix filter. And there's the debate. Mobile One and Wix. Ah, oh, there's better stuff. I know, but this is good stuff too, and that's what we're gonna use. Because I said so. I like Mobile One. I know it's nothing super special. It's not the, it's not like a Pennzoil Ultra Platinum or anything like that. But it's a fairly decent oil. It's got a decent additive package, and uh, it will do just fine for this uh, three liter Ford. However, it won't do fine with uh, my pouring things action because of the angle of our dangle here and the large opening of this uh, this container. I'm gonna give it a shot, but I fear I'm gonna spill. I know we're doing good, we're doing all right. What's that, three quarts? Sure. Number four coming in. Um, no. Come here. It's stuck, you guys. Oh, fail. There we go. Ow, that kind of hurt. Yep, quart number four. That equates to one gallon. For you European types. Yeah, that's another... Another set of re right there. Okay, this is court five. We're gonna head into the cabin and uh, starting the engine. We're gonna hear a whole bunch of whining from the power steering pump because that fluid is going to be aerated and uh, it will go away as the air bubbles migrate their way uh, to the reservoir and then ultimately remove themselves from solution. Beginning engine stocking sequence now. Check the reservoir, make sure that it's slurped up all the fluid. Let's see what we got. Mm, yeah, a little bit low, a little low. As to be expected, pouring things encore, round two. Uh oh, I got a flashlight battery dying. And since our oil filter's primed, we can go ahead and check that oil level next. Let's see what we got. We are a little low, another half quarter, so we should do it. Mm. 
There we go. And I'll mop up my spillage too. I don't want that. It's unsightly and unprofessional. There. Okay, restarting round two. We're gonna, we'll let this uh, power steering system purge. Shut up pretty soon as, uh, as all these air bubbles migrate their way out. In fact, I think it needs uh, a little bit more. Nice. Okay, let's take a peek down below. We'll do a leak check real quick. Looking good. No filter leak, no drain plug leak. Let's check the power steering lines over here on this side. Those are right there, looking good. O-rings have done their job. And that whining noise has stopped. We're good to go. All right, guys, this video is running long. Time is of the essence. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. I just need to slap the wheels back on, and uh, we'll get this thing over to, the, uh, to another shop to have the alignment done, and we'll be good to go. So uh, that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. And don't forget to drop me a comment or two while you're down there. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of escape. Funnel. Flashlight. Oh, funnel gravity. Big flashlight. Man, would you believe that they don't have this and concentrate at the parts store? Or at least not the one that I used. I had to buy it by the gallon. It's like six bucks a gallon. That's ridiculous. Just blue water. All rain. Oh, there we go. Blue water flip. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.